Good morning. I'm in downtown Bali and uh, my hubby's just gone into Seminyak to try and hire a car, which I'm quite anxious about because I'm a nervous Nelly when I travel. And um, for any of you that have been to Bali, you know, it's pretty bloody chaotic with all the motorcycles and everything. So, And he's just had a knee reconstruction. And not construction, replacement. So not, yeah, not his old knee hasn't been reconstructed. He's had a whole new knee put in, which basically means they just cut the bone above the knee and above, uh, below the knee and put a new knee in. So it's a big surgery. He's now on a motorbike, eight weeks after surgery, riding into Tempestar. So, but he's this fearless kind of person. And... Um, yeah, so I'm sitting here hoping and praying he gets back safely. And I uh, thought I'd just use a chance wisely to try and do something to help stabilise myself. So there's no one here to really chat to. Um, everyone downstairs is asleep. So I thought I'd hold my own hand whilst I'm a little bit anxious with him being gone. And... Just picking up on, you know, my Womaning Up series is always about womaning up and not being afraid to expose anxiety or fear or uncertainty, which we all have. And in the absence of a wise elder to hold our hand through it, to be that for ourselves and just to hold ourselves steady and breathe and self-align. I've mentioned in previous vlogs about my love of acronyms, you know, letters that stand for words like, you know, denial didn't even know it was a lie or um, yet you're eligible to. Hope, hold on pain ends. Um, but another one I like that I haven't sort of mentioned to you yet is um, how. And whenever I hear myself or I have someone say to me, how the bloody hell do you do that? How do you hold on to hope? How do you, as a nervous, nearly introverted traveller, travel with an extroverted, fearless man? And I like to break the word how down into H-O-W. H stands for honestly. O stands for open-mindedly. And W stands for willingly. And for those of you like me that are in recovery circles, um, we know that, you know, we use the HOW acronym, you know, how do we stay clean and sober, honestly, open-mindedly and willingly because there's a big thing, you know, in recovery that's very much about de-shaming and not keeping secrets, especially not keeping secrets from yourself and pretending you're not afraid when you are. So honestly, open-mindedly and willingly, and whenever you hear yourself going, how the bloody hell am I going to do this, or how, 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 your answer is in your question. How do you do it? Honestly, open-mindedly and willingly. So up until now, we've been in Bali a few days now, and up until now we've had a driver. So that's somebody like a cab driver that just shows up and drives you wherever you want and just waits for you, which... For us Australians, you know, that don't grow up with help, you know, each morning these beautiful Balinese women come in clean and fold and iron, which is beautiful. And in a hotel, I'm fine with that because, you know, you're paying for a service. When you're staying in someone's home, you know, these beautiful angelic women come in and just want to help you. I sort of, I want to help them. I want to make them a cup of tea. So getting used to having people in someone's home serving you and then... Um, we went up to Ubud the other day and this beautiful driver, our first driver was Katut. I had to really refrain from going, hi, I'm Rhonda, but no. Um, and I, I didn't understand that Katut stands for fourth born. It's the name for the fourth born. Anyway, Baba, our driver the other day, took us to Ubud and uh, we went and had lunch at this divine place. And he just sat outside and waited. I wanted to go out and give him a meal and feed him. And no, 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 you know, he wouldn't let us. But anyway... A little chat to myself in self counsel and self studies. Now that Mr. Delicious, my darling husband, has gone to get himself a car, I, I just said point blank before he went on this trip, I'm not getting on the back of a bike. 
and you might, might all say, you know, you know, God, you know, it's how you do barley and all you hip slick and groovy people that are fearless and can get on the back of a bike, more power to you. However, I choose not to get back on, on the back of a bike here. It's not going to be fun for me. I can't pretend to be relaxed about things I'm not. I value my life way too much. I've worked way too hard to build this beautiful life. I ain't risking it on the back of a bike. So I said to Chris, if you want to get on a bike, sweetheart, you do it, but you're on your own. If you want me to travel with you, I do it with a driver, but we've compromised because he likes to drive. We're going to do it in the car. So how am I going to do this? Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> A day at a time. Open-mindedly. I have told him, you know, that I need to not navigate. I'm, I'm lousy with maps. I find it stressful. And I can't drive with him if he's Googling maps while he drives. So he has to know where we're going before we get there. And he's he's agreed within some parameters. He can't speed here because it's too bloody chaotic. And willingly, I'm always willing to try things. Um, I've got a calculated risks to me getting on the back of a motorbike is just unsafe but how am I going to cope with him driving in Balinese traffic uh, well remains to be seen but I'm going to do it honestly open mindedly and willingly